Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about RFID. So to start with, what is RFID? Well RFID is Radio Frequency Identification and um, it's used for, well, identification. So if you, for example, worked at a certain place and you had an ID card, this is just a blank ID card, but you could have your name printed on it and a photo or something, and maybe you could scan it across something and something will beep and the gate will open. Um, you can use it for a lot of different things. Um, but that's what it's for anyway, identification. And of course this. Um, sometimes we see in restaurants in the UK, I, don't, I assume they're all over the world, um, people can have like a pen tag and they go up to their till and they have their key fob and they push it into it, it's, ma it's held in by a magnet and that identifies them um, as an employee and it of course tells the computer which employee they are by their ID number. So that's uh, where our RFID is used and that's basically what it is. So it's a communication protocol, it's a wireless communication protocol and it transfers data from something to something else. Usually it's only a small amount of data, like, um, I don't know, a, a customer number or an um, employee number or something like that. And yeah, so this holds the number and there's a reader and you swipe it across and it identifies you. And that's RFID. So how do they actually work? Um, you can be inclined to think that this is a reader and these are transmitters. So that's a receiver and these are transmitters. Because if you think about it, if this was to transmit all the time and you flashed that over there or you passed it over, this could receive. And um, unfortunately it's not that simple. So this is what actually happens. On here, these pins, they obviously connect to your microcontroller. And then this chip here, this is a converter. It converts SPI, in this case, to the technology used to drive this antenna. So what happens is that when one of these cards is placed on here the um, the wires in here basically power a coil inside here and when they power the coil, the coil they induce energy into this and this responds by transmitting its signal back to the antenna and then the antenna receives it this chip uh, basically converts that signal into SPI and then back to the microcontroller. So this um, is a reader and, um, and that's fine but it's a reader most of the time but it's also actually a writer. Um, initially when you get these cards and things you'd need to write something on them so you, maybe you'd write on some data, uh, the employee number or whatever. So this is a writer, a writer, but primarily a reader. Um, so yeah, get that out of the way. So that's a transmitter and a receiver. I suppose you could say it's a transceiver. And that's what that does. But notice though, something important, that this actually powers this. In, so it passes some energy through here, induces a, a voltage or a current, and therefore powers this. So now onto this, how does this work? In here, there's um, something called an EEPROM inside it. So an EEPROM, Electronically Erasable Programmable Random Access Memory. Uh, sorry, Read Only Memory. Uh, not RAM, it's ROM, so EEPROM. So these things are data storage devices, but these data storage devices are also transponders. So what happens is that when this powers this, this is programmed to respond straight away, hence why it's called a transponder. It responds with some data. And then this, of course, like I said earlier, uh, converts all that and sends it back to the Arduino. So this has got some data in it. It's already been pre-flashed, uh, if you like, by this previously. And it's powered and it immediately sends back a signal back to here. And of course, that signal would include the identification and whatever else. And that's how these work. They're both the same. That's how they work. So these particular ones, they can store one kilobyte of data. And um, yeah, that's how they work. 
So in simple terms, we first use this to write to these. So we write to their EEPROMs. Then what we do is we change the role of this thing, and this becomes a reader. So then, um, this basically um, is powering continually. When this is placed on, this says to this, hey, I'm here, give me some data. And this immediately responds and transmits its data to this. And then that converts it back to the Arduino, and then the Arduino or the microcontroller can decide what to do. So, it would be a good idea now if I was to get the Arduino and plug it in, and first get this to write some sort of ID onto this, or maybe some more data. So, uh, I'm going to do that one as well. So, the first thing I'm going to do is get the Arduino and make this um, have an ID and some data, and the same with this. Then, after that, I'm going to change this thing's role, and I'm going to make this read the data from these two. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So here's the pinout. From left to right, you'll see this. STA, SCK, MOSI, MISO, IRQ, GROUND, RST, and 3.3 volts. So SDA goes to pin 10, SCK goes to 13, MOSI goes to 11, MISO goes to 12, IRQ isn't used. Ground, of course, goes to ground, reset goes to pin 9, and 3.3 volts, of course, goes to 3.3 volts. I'm using the Arduino Uno today. Um, it's quite unusual, because I don't usually um, show the Uno on the videos. I don't really know why. I think um, I think what it is, is I, I can easily push that into breadboards, and my projects usually are better off with breadboards. But anyway... This project seemed to warrant using the UNO, so here you go. So we've wired that up, and um, now it's time to install the software. So I'll go over to my PC. The first thing you're going to need to do is to go to https colon slash slash uh, github.com forward slash Miguel Balboa forward slash RFID. Uh, this is a really great library, and um, this guy has probably spent a long time doing this library, so um, thank you. Anyway, so go to clone, clone or download, and then go to download zip. And then that will start to download. And it's downloaded. So if you just click the um, file path there and go to copy, then go to tools, and then, uh, sorry, not tools, sketch, and then include library, go to add zip library. And then paste in the library, and then click open. It should uh, go ahead and import that library for you. So I get an error here, a library name, blah, 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 already exists. And it should do, because I've already done it. But anyway, then go to um, file, and then examples. And then go down to MFRC522. And then go to dump info. So this is the first one we're going to use. So you've already wired your Arduino up. So now will be a good time to plug it in and flash this script over. Okay, so when that's flashed, um, then press Control Shift and M. And uh, you'll get this come up. So if you just take your card now and hold it above... The card, oh, there you go, I've got a bit of an error there, let me do it again. Yeah, if you hold it above, and sometimes a little bit picky, um, you should get all this data. So the way this thing works is, of the one kilobyte, oops, I'll just go up there. So of the one kilobyte, it's split into sectors and blocks. And um, that's just the way that the thing works. Now, certain sectors and blocks, uh, well, certain blocks, actually, are not overwritable. Uh, this one here, I believe, is not overwritable. And, uh, and that's okay. But anyway, we've read the card. So, let's just do the next one. I'm going to do the key fob now. So, the card is 429C3B5B. Now, I'll do the other. I'll just go down. And right at the bottom should be the ID. 
and it's a different ID. So it's ATE0 B5 4F. Anyway, so what we want to do now is write over um, to some of this data. So how do we do that? So now I'm going to go through how to very easy, easily and quickly uh, put some data onto this. And I'm going to keep it very simple. So we're going to add onto the card and the, um, the key fob a uh, forename and a surname. So to do that, go to File and then Examples. And then go down to MFRC522 and then go to RFID Write Personal Data. And uh, this can do a lot more, but just to give you a bit of a taste of what it can do. So press Control on you and let's upload that to the Arduino. Okay, so when that's done, press Control Shift and M to get the console up. So Control Shift M and it's up. So it, it says write personal data on a MyFair PICC. So this is really important that you keep the card very still because this doesn't always have a 100% success rate. So I'm going to put the card on and keep it there. And it says type a family name ending with hash. So let's say Cartwright hash. Straight into the serial console. Press enter. And then it says success. Type a first name ending with hash. So Anthony hash enter. And it's done, allegedly. Right, so I'll take it away. And I think I will restart that just in case. So Control Shift M. And now time for the fob. Um, so I'll put the fob on. Type a family name ending with hash. Hmm. May hash enter. Enter a first name ending with that. So Teresa enter and it says my fair right success so I'll take the fob away now okay and then close this then go to file and then examples and then go down to MFRC522 and then go to RFID read personal data now on here flash this just as earlier and hopefully this key fob and the card will work we'll soon find out Right, so uploading, and when it's done, press Control Shift M. So Control Shift M. And now I'll just place the card on the reader, and let's see what happens. So it says card detected, and it's got the user ID and the SAK, whatever that is. Pick type MyFair 1KB, name Anthony Cartwright, and end reading. So that's how to put your name on the thing. And let's try the key fob. Make sure this is going to work. Card detected, user ID, and name, Theresa May, end reading. So, um, that's what RFID is. Um, that's what these little um, devices are. That's how they work. And that's how to very simply uh, get up and running with the devices, how to write your name, and how to read it back again. Thank you for watching. Bye.